Hello children, you're welcome once again to our lesson. Yes, my name is Abraham. Yes, before I welcome you the exact lesson, we are going to do corrections for activity number three, where we looked at slave trade. Activity number three, and our first question was slave, what is slave trade? And we say it's slave trade is the buying and selling of human beings, the buying and selling of human beings beings uh-huh name the group of foreigners who started slave trade in uganda who were they these were the arab traders mm -hmm. mention two methods the arab traders used to get slaves what method they used to get slaves number one we said riding villages at night capturing people along the way laying traps along the way they capture strong men then buying from kings and chiefs. Those are the methods. Put a tick where I passed it very well. Then we said, how did slave trade affect food production? We said, uh, strong men that would till the land, that would cultivate the land, we are taken away as slaves. So it affected food production. Then we look at, give one reason why. Slaves, we are needed by European countries. Number one, we said, mm -hmm. number one was, yes, to provide cheap labor. Two, some beautiful women would be taken as housemaids. Then others were taken to carry heavy goods from the interior to the coast. Interior means from Uganda to the coast of East Africa. Now, I welcome you out. Welcome to Social Studies lesson number four. Lesson number four. Remember this platform is brought to you directly by Chisembo Abraham, our very own. Yes, our very own. I love you so much and I don't want you to remain behind. I encourage your parents to support you in everything. We are still looking at slave trade. Now today, specifically want to look at the abolition of slave trade. Trade, abolition of slave trade. What is to abolish? What is to abolish? To abolish is to stop. To stop something from happening. Something has been going on. Then you stop it. You have abolished slave trade. So to abolish is to stop. So I want to look at how slave trade was abolished in East Africa. Now, Methods the Europeans used to abolish slave trade. Methods the British applied to stop slave trade. What did they use to make sure slave trade comes to an end? One of the methods used was to sign treaties, signing treaties or agreements. Have you ever signed an agreement to somebody? So the, the British would sign treaties, agreements with the leaders of the slave dealers and say, no, you see what you are doing is very wrong. Let us agree that from this time, no more slaves. They would sign treaties, agreements with the slave dealers. But still, some of them would refuse constructing the railway line. So the British decided to say, no, why are some people taken as slaves to carry heavy goods? Why can't we bring the trains so that the trains can carry the goods instead of human beings? So they had to bring the goods to carry heavy goods. They had to bring railway or they had to bring trains to carry heavy goods. So constructing the Kenya-Uganda railway. Another method that was used to stop slave trade was sending Christian missionaries. Sending Christian missionaries. Why were the missionaries sent to Uganda? One of the reasons, as we shall see, why the missionaries came to Uganda was to stop slave trade, was to stop slave trade. Mm -hmm. Use of military means, that is use of force. If these people refuse, the Arab traders have been told to stop slave trade and they could refuse. So what the British did was to bring their army, their commandos, and put them on the Indian Ocean. So they would arrest any doors, any ships carrying slaves, they arrest. So that is using force. Those were the methods the British used to stop slave trade. Signing treaties, constructing the railway line, sending the Christian missionaries, and then using military means, using force. However, it was not easy to stop slave trade. It wasn't easy to stop slave trade. 
Let us look at the examples of treaties signed, agreements signed. One of the agreements that were signed, we had the Mosby Treaty, the Hamatan Treaty, and the Free Treaty. These were agreements signed to stop slave trade. Mosby, Mosby, called More, Mores by Treaty, Hamatan Treaty, and the Free Treaty. Those were the slave trade abolition treaties signed in, in East Africa. They were signed in Kenya, Tanzania, the coast, with the leaders of the Arab traders. You are going to skip two lines and write the heading. Indian traders, the Indian traders. Who were these Indian traders? Remember I told you the traders came in two groups, were the Arab traders and the Indian traders. Now we are looking at the Indian traders. The Indian traders came from India. They came from where? India. Whereas the Arabs came from Saudi Arabia. So they came mainly to carry out trade. They came mainly to carry out trade. Okay? They came mainly to carry out trade. Okay? They came mainly to carry out trade. Mm -hmm. mm, before that one, I want to bring you to this one here. Some Indians, such as the Indian coolies, came to construct the Uganda Railway. Some Indians, such as the Indian coolies, came to construct the Uganda Railway. Some of them came to construct the, the, the Kenya-Uganda Railway. So I ask you, which group of Indians constructed the Kenya-Uganda Railway? They were called the Indian Coolies. The Indian Coolies. And spelling of Coolies, write the word cool. Add I-E-S. The Indian Coolies. The first Indian trader to open up a shop in, Uga in Kampala was called Aldina Visram. The first Arab trader to open up a shop in Kampala was called Aldina Visram. So when they ask you, why is Aldina Visram remembered in Uganda? You will say Aldina Visram was the first Indian trader to open up a shop in Kampala. He opened up a shop in Kampala. The other time I told you about Ahmed bin Ibrahim and he said he was the leader of the first Arabs to come to Uganda. So I take you back to the other slide. Contributions of the Arab traders. Contributions of the Arab traders. Mm, you skip a line and say contributions of the Arab traders. Why do we remember the Arab traders? Not Arab traders, the Indian traders, sorry. The Indian traders, contributions of the Indian traders. One, the Indians introduced a form of money called the Indian rupees. Indian rupees. Spelling of rupees, be careful. I will ask you tomorrow to spell the word rupees. Arabs introduced cowrie shells. Indians introduced rupees. They are there, the coins of the Indians. Those were the Indian rupees. Contribution number two. Contribution number two. The Indians started sugarcane plantation farms in Uganda. For example, had we have Lugazi sugarcane plantation farms. We had the Kakira sugarcane plantation farms. These were farms, these were plantations that were started by the Indians. Means they introduced sugarcane growing in Uganda. What else did they do? The Arabs. Why do we remember them? The Arabs. One of the reasons why we remember the Arabs, another reason is that the Arabs built sugar factories. They built sugar factories they built sugar factories yes sugar factories the ones that make sugar indians such as the indian coolies constructed the, the uganda railway what do, why do you remember them they constructed the uganda railway question what happened to the indians in uganda in 1972 what do you think happened in, to the indians this is what happened to the Indians were in Uganda. The Indians were chased away from Uganda. The Indians were expelled. By who? Idamin Dada. Idamin Dada. The Indians were expelled by Idamin Dada. Yes, he chased them and said, this is taking a lot of profits from my country. He said, go away. And he gave them 90 days. Leave my country. 
if I ever find any Indian here, you're going to be shh, shh, three months and had to run away. Hmm. All their businesses were taken away by the Africans. So in 1972, the Arabs, the Indians were chased away from Uganda. Activity number four is there. What is slave trade? Why did slave trade take long to be abolished in Uganda? How did the construction of the Kenya Railway, Kenya-Uganda Railway, help in stopping slave trade? That one we can answer and say, trains were used to carry heavy goods instead of human beings. I repeat, trains were used to carry heavy goods instead of human beings. So when the trains were introduced, there was no need for slaves to carry heavy goods. That's how the railway helped in stopping slave trade. Then name the group of Asians who constructed the Kenya-Uganda Railway. I've just taught it. What form of currency did the Indians introduce? I've also taught it. This marks the end of our lesson number four. Which topic for any influence? What shall we look at when we come back? European explorers. But before the European explorers, boys and girls, there is a, a test, a small test that you will do. Okay, then after that test, we shall look at the European explorers. I love you so much. May the Heavenly Father protect you for me. Chisembo Abraham is my name once again. Thank you for listening. Be careful, do my work very well, revise. Because I need to meet you next year when you know the answers. Bye-bye. See you some other day. Take care of yourself.